Hello, thanks for checking out this video on the sim racing rig that I'm doing. My name's Highmark9090, and some of you guys uh, that have been part of the Opochcast in the past are probably wondering, why is the uh, Tarkov dad uh, podcast guy talking about sim racing rigs and putting them together? Uh, just to give you a little bit of a background, I've been a sim racing nerd uh, uh, player uh, for a long time. And maybe not uh, technically sim racing. Uh, you know, if you go back in the Forza days, I, I played a lot of Forza, had, was in a lot of leagues with a lot of those guys. Um, and then as we all started getting a bit older, we all started moving up into sim racing stuff. Um, but even before the Forza stuff, um, I remember uh, running the old NASCAR games back in the late 90s. Um, on some old 46 PC that I had. So I've been around sim titles and sim racing for quite a long time. Uh, so it's always been in my heart. And I've finally gotten to the point in my life where I can start affording uh, some of the more advanced um, things for sim racing um, and decided to jump into that uh, era, uh, if you will, uh, with this new, th this new rig that we're going to be talking about today, uh, from the guys over at Sim Motion. Um, this, this is video is going to be a build. Um, I'm going to have, a, a, a complete time lapse of me building this from start to finish, including all the unboxing and, and even some of the, the goof ups I did along the way. Cause this is my first, uh, uh extruded, uh, chassis that I've ever built. Uh, beforehand, I was running this, the Logitech uh, wheel that you'll see, um, also upgraded some pedals and we'll talk about those a little bit too. Uh, but the Logitech wheel on just a, on just a stand and then sitting in my office chair with locking wheels on it. Um, and, and it's been a dramatic improvement. We'll just say that. So without further ado, we'll jump right into the, uh, to the build here. All right, so this is the unboxing uh, of the uh, and build of the premium aluminum extrusion chassis with GT seat uh, from the guys over at Sim Motion. Uh, they were great guys to work with. Um, they were super helpful and and super patient with with a, a guy that's kind of new to this level of sim racing stuff and and kind of trying to move up in in that world. and And they were super gracious and and helped out a lot with everything. Um. As you can see uh, with this unpacking, everything was was super well packed. Quality comp quality components. Uh, there weren't any blemishes on any of the powder coating or or uh, uh, I guess this is actually anodized anodizing uh, aluminum anywhere. Everything was everything was great. Um, no no dings or anything in any of the boxes. So uh, everything everything turned out really well. Um, the, as you can see, as I was unboxing everything, you saw the, the pedal plate and super rigid, um, the, the, uh, brackets for the uprights are, are gigantic. And we'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, my only gripe with like the pedal plate is there aren't enough mounting, uh, holes for the VNM pedals that I had. Um, I ended up having to drill out the plate to add bolts, uh, on, um, on one side of, of the for each set of pedals. So, uh, not quite enough there would have been fine if I would have got the, the, the mounting plate for the VNM pedals, or if I was mounting any, any system that had a mounting plate wouldn't have been a big deal. Um, the other thing that I kind of a nitpick that I want to talk about are these angles, um, the angle, uh, covers they they make an, a nice cover plastic cover for the for the 90 degree angle brackets however um they don't stick real well and you'll see i i take them on and re-put them back on and as i'm moving the rig around they fall off so i think we're gonna have issues with that uh in the future what i'm showing here is one of those brackets and these tabs specific specifically and they're they're there to make sure that the angle bracket stays in that 
um, slot and doesn't rotate when you're cranking everything down. However, when you're trying to put these seat rails on, you need to break those tabs off um, to get them to fit in this orientation here uh, that I'm showing. And you saw just then that it popped, and that's how I got them to break off. You could probably hit them with a hammer, um, you know, and tap them with a hammer and get them off, or you know, pry them with a with a grab them with a pair of pliers and pop them off. But I just put them in the in, uh, on the the uh, angle. Uh, or on the uh, 2020 extrusion there and cranked them down tight and they just then they just snapped um, to, to get them to get them off like like you see there so now that that angle um, will sit in the orientation I need it to uh, to fit on the seats uh, for the seat rails and, and you'll see here um, I'm I'm showing you or attempting to show you what it looks like when it's nice and flush um, and we can crank it down that way and then the other one I'm gonna throw another one on here real quick and and show you what it looks like uh, when you don't have when you didn't take those tabs off and I think the issue here is if you don't pop those tabs off you can't crank that guy down far enough um, or hard enough and moving around in your seat when you're racing eventually I think those tabs would pop uh, if you had enough tension on them and then you'd have that looseness in your seat wouldn't be the end of the world you just get down there and crank them back down again but it's something to think about when you're uh, when you're putting this seat together to, to go ahead and break those guys off and do it right the first time uh, what I decided after after this was um, to actually pull these rails off and, and attach them directly to the chair um, itself oh uh, another thing I want to talk about here is uh, I decided to put the feet on the bottom of the rig now uh, instead of when the instructions actually tell you to because they tell you to do it almost at the very end when the whole thing's assembled and I figured it was easier now when I could lay it flat and and, and easily get to the bottom of them to put the T-nuts in and, and the the plastic feet on again kind of another nitpick um, they're just plastic feet um, instead of more like a, a hard rubber or, or a rubber that won't move around so it the the rig can slide around on my hardwood floors um, a little bit so uh, another something to think about uh, finally uh, uh, going along with the seat stuff it shows here in the instructions that those angles the brackets should be on the outside of the rails however um, with this particular seat um, the seat rails for this to mount uh, I couldn't make those work they wouldn't fit that way uh, there wasn't enough room on the rail to be able to do that so I uh, I ended up attaching the rails directly to that 2020 um, extrusion and then you'll see here in a minute I actually moved the uh, the brackets to the inside not a big deal but just something to to observe that the the instructions tell you one thing and that didn't work with this particular seat different seat might be different uh, uh, a different uh, uh, solution there those might work that way but this particular seat they didn't work um talking uh going a little bit more in depth about the seat itself it's uh it's a super quality seat uh, good cushioning on the bottom uh nice stitching you can see the sim motion uh, uh logo kind of stitched in the backrest there it's kind of nice uh looking it's not uh, uh overly like in your face it's it's pretty subdued which is kind of what I like it's uh, I like all that stuff um, however the one thing I will say about the seat is as you can tell I'm kind of a bigger fellow I uh, I'm about six foot 300 pounds and those bolsters on the bottom uh, do dig in on the side of my legs a little bit um, so if you are a, a bigger guy you may want to look at maybe uh, sourcing this rig without the seat and finding you know a, a seat for bigger bigger guys uh, I'm using it more as a motivation to drop a few LBs, but you know. Uh, one of the things that we were showing just there are these these those plates for the uprights, right? And these things are thick, like like multiple C's thick, man. Uh, I actually measured them uh, with the uh, the calipers, and we're at ten and a half millimeter thick. So, and it's the same thickness for this uh, wheel plate that we're showing as well. So, I don't think there's going to be any issues with with uh, rigidity or anything like that, even when using uh, more high end direct drive wheels those 20 newton meter wheels shouldn't have an issue with this with this wheel plate in the uprights either because it's it was super solid when i cranked it down uh 
um, the the angle of the um, of the pedal plate there you can see I, I started just dead square in the middle but with that and the and the VNM pedals I ended up moving that down to almost flat and um, I probably still need to adjust my pedals even a little bit more uh, another minor nitpick that I have is the um, plastic covers um, that cover that extrusion you can see them there on the top of the the upright um, they're made out of a pretty brittle plastic so you need to be super careful when you're when you're kind of hammering them on that that extrusion to get them set uh, I actually broke uh, one of the bigger ones for the base there um, not a big deal I just moved it to the front you know that's going to be up against the wall anyway so you can't see it but you do need to be pretty even with your with your pounding and 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 uh, and kind of uh, gentle at first to get them all on there and get them close otherwise you can crack and break it the other minor nitpick I'm going to have is the T-nuts. I, I had an issue with those uh, multiple times, uh, specifically here with this uh, the shifter, putting this thing on over here. You'll see me struggle with it for a little while um, because I had a T-nut ju that just kept falling in. Um, it, it wouldn't stay there, and the, the minute you tried to put a, a nut on it, it would just kick sideways and fall down. So I fought with that for a while. Um, and so I think think I may have rather had the other style T-nuts uh, that are a little wider and and don't aren't aren't spring loaded um, or maybe the ball tent ones and pay a little more but I don't know it, it, that again a super minor nitpick and uh, when it comes to this whole rig in general um, you coming up here you'll see <laughs> where I had one of my major major screw ups I looked at the instructions completely wrong and realized that uh i put that that uh, wheel plate on backwards <laughs> so um all i i ended up taking the taking the wheel plate off rotating it around putting the putting the uh, uh wheel on the right way and then getting it back on there and this is again where those t-nuts kind of kind of bit me in the butt uh i kept trying to put them on holding this big heavy plate because it is a heavy plate with that 10 millimeter thick stuff and and trying to get the the bolt screwed in just kept knocking the t-nuts down and i had to fish them back up and get everything ready so um adjustability everything's completely adjustable i left everything kind of kind of loose um to the point until i I felt like I got where I needed to be. I still think I might have the 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 uprights a little too far away, um, but I'm still playing with adjustments there. Overall, I'm super happy with the system. I'm glad I made that purchase. And now for the grand reveal. So that's it, the whole chassis completed. Uh, I think the build took me about three and a half hours total uh, to go through it. I'm I'm pretty mechanically inclined, so uh, you know, give or take a few hours, depending on how uh, uh, how mechanically inclined you are with with the stuff. There were some fiddly bits that were kind of a pain in the butt. Like I said, those spring T nuts. Uh, Gave me a fit in a couple of locations where they just kept falling through. Uh, if you didn't have it lined up exactly perfect uh, and you tried to put the the screw in, it would kick sideways and just fall down the extrusion. So uh, fought that for a little bit on a couple of locations there. Obviously uh, just screwed up uh, putting the wheel plate on backwards and, and dealt with that for you know 20 30 minutes uh easily uh as i fought with that one so you, you know you could shave some time off of it for sure um uh, depending on on how uh, how uh, efficient you are with building the system um yeah uh impression so far really enjoy it uh if you're 
planning on, especially if you're planning on upgrading to load cell pedals, like I did here with these VNM pedals, I there would there would be no absolute no way uh, that I could run these these load cell pedals uh, in the the old rig that I was running. Right, um, I, I could have mounted them, you know, no no issues and all that. However, even with the locking uh, casters that I have on my uh, on my seat as soon as i try to put any pressure on those my seat would rotate right anything like that so um i i think it's kind of a a, a must have a a rig of some some sort right a solid rig of some sort is a must have if you're going to go from you know those potential from the potentiometer style pedals that I was running before uh, to these load cell pedals. Uh, you have to have some kind of rig because it's impossible not to. Also, uh, the force feedback, um, even with the the kind of low end, you know, Logitech wheel that I'm running, uh, the force feedback effects are, are pretty significantly different um, when they're attached to something that's just completely solid. Now, the, the pedal uh, and wheel stand I was using before was actually one of the better ones. It wasn't super flimsy. Um, it was pretty, pretty solid. Uh, but even still, the difference is, is dramatic. So um, if you're uh, contemplating it, thinking about doing it, I would definitely highly recommend this rig. Um, I, 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 there are a lot of other rigs out there, you know, for the same or, or maybe even a little cheaper price. There's a lot of rigs out there for way more money too. Um, but for me, this is, this is kind of my end game. Um, I, I think with having the, the large, uh, uh, base on it, I can, I can upgrade this and, and put motion on it if I wanted to, and it still be nice and solid and square, uh, because of, um, because of how big that base is. So I shouldn't have any issues with that. Um, I shouldn't have, uh, if I, if, if I want to go to motion and, and stuff like that, I shouldn't have any issues with going up to, uh, those direct drive wheels and, and even, even, you know, some of the 20 Newton meter direct drive wheels, sh this should be able to handle that without any issues. The, the uprights are super solid and that, those 10 and a half millimeter thick, uh, uh, plates at the, at the end of it are, are, are unbelievably, uh, capable of, of handling that load. So, uh, I think this is kind of my end end game rig, uh, moving forward. Now the, <laughs> the rest of the stuff, obviously the, the, the direct drive wheels next, uh, I'll be needing to grab a H pattern shifter and an e-brake. Cause I do like to play some, uh, some uh rally games you know dirt rally and stuff like that so definitely want to get some of that and, I, and i'm kind of leaning towards the vnm stuff as i got the pedals and i really enjoy those but uh that'll be a whole nother video we'll talk about the the vnm pedals moving forward so thanks guys if you liked it thumbs up all that kind of stuff leave comments you know asking questions uh there was no videos online that i could see of this rig and uh, specifically so uh if you have any questions about anything uh definitely throw them down there in the comments and let me know and, and i'll make sure i answer them anyway appreciate it guys we'll talk to you later thanks